Unicorns and glitter and taxidermy critters are just some of the things they like. They also enjoy 80s hair bands, Grizzly Adams and John Goodman, so if you think that's weird then you can take a hike. But the things they enjoy the most are making art and cracking jokes. So without further ado, here are your hosts. You've got your two artsy gals, your two artsy gals. Here are your two artsy gals. Hey everybody, this is Katie. And this is Sharon. And welcome to the Two Artsy Gals podcast. Uh, we are back. So uh, this week we're going to talk a little bit about studio safety and safety equipment and first aid kits. And just stuff you need around to be safe in your studio because sometimes doing art is hazardous. Especially if... Or you <laughs> glue stuff to yourself. <laughs> yeah, or I glue shit to myself. Or I was just going to say, especially if you're me doing art is hazardous because I can't seem to... I don't know. I can't paint and chew gum at the same time. So... <laughs> But but it is, in all seriousness, you know, there's shit you need around. And I think over the years, I think we all discover crap that we should have that we don't have when we need it. You yeah. know, like there was a little bit of a fire incident in my office that made me realize, hey, maybe I should also have a fucking fire extinguisher in here and not just in my kitchen. So I do. <laughs> Good idea. So, Good you plan. Know, you know. Just stuff. I, I was cutting open a smoke bomb, and there may have been a heat gun too near the residue, and <laughs> it was, I was doing a weird collage thing, and my husband told me that I was mentally handicapped and that I should stop doing stuff. <laughs> so, but yeah. Wow. It just and caught so the paper blotter on my desk on fire, though. I threw, I smothered it. Oh, that's good. But that's good. You know. But anyway, you should also have. You know, a fire extinguisher just for, you know, you never know. Close but. by, yes. And maybe in a general uh, first aid kit. Yeah, and I wanted things. to actually talk about stuff you need in your first aid kits because, like I said, sometimes you do shit and you go, oh, I should probably have, like, I use a lot of balsa wood sometimes in my work, and I was sanding balsa wood, and... Although I had eye protection on, it was not the correct kind. And I blew the balsa wood dust and it, cause that makes a really fine, I was using actually a Dremel to like carve into it and I blew it and the dust went up under my eye protection and into my eyes. Oh, wow. And I thought, Hey crap, I probably should have an eye rinse cup somewhere in my house. Mm hmm. And so I went and bought one the next. Well, I had to go buy one because my eye got so irritated. But, you know, an iron's cup, cup and saline. Yeah, absolutely. Because you use a, we use a lot of crap that ends up it could be a hazard to your like even with eye protection. Mm hmm. You can absolutely. get shit in your eyes. Like sometimes I don't know. I've squirted paint or something just pulling a lid off and having it squirt out it could go in your eye you never know sure yeah and i don't think we think about that very often you know wearing the eye protection when you're doing that kind of stuff yeah not yeah especially like just when you're uncapping a thing of glue like right unless yeah, but it can happen so unless you're me box. you really don't need eye protection doing right. stuff like that <laughs> Right, but you know, maybe if you're sanding stuff. Yeah, no, dremel, you should have, and that's actually one of the things that we're going to talk about here today is having safety shit like that too for your eye protection. But back to the first aid kits. Mm -hmm. So, what kind of stuff do you have in your first aid kit around your studio? Like, um, well, band aids, and then I thought about this. That tweezers are a good thing to have in there because like if you're working with metal or wood and you get something a lot of times I get like little metal pieces stuck in my fingers and so it's nice to have a pair of tweezers on hand that's a good idea I, I do have tweezers but I never thought about that in the context of a yeah. first aid kit right yeah so and then you know you're just your gauze mm -hmm. um, and the band-aids yeah uh, neosporin mm -hmm. rubbing alcohol and and hydrogen peroxide and yeah all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and, and i actually keep uh medical grade super glue you can buy it that 
you know, I don't know what it's oh, called. Oh, right. What is it called? I mean, it's just medical super glue. I mean, I think you can find it in the first aid aisle at any grocery store. Yeah. Is it called liquid band-aids? Yeah. Yeah. I think that is what it's called. But mm-hmm. I keep some of that too, because sometimes, sometimes band-aids don't cut it. If you, I've actually had cuts that I should probably have just gone to get stitches for, but <laughs> who wants to go get stitches? <laughs> you know, I mean, as long as you didn't cut a tendon or something, right, just glue right. that shit shut and move on with your day. Should you glue an item to it, though? No. Oh, okay. Don't glue items. And first, as long as we're talking about this first aid kit wise, I think that it's a good idea to know what you need to get yourself unglued from shit. Why don't you share that with us, Katie? So... Since you're the expert on gluing shit to yourself. I have found fingernail polish remover works pretty great, but you need the acetone fingernail polish remover, not the non-acetone. The acetone breaks down the glue. Okay. You will still have glue stuck to you. It just kind of breaks down the... It helps you get your fingers apart or off of the unicorn that you just glued yourself to or... What the fuck else did I glue myself to the other day? I've had a recent um, gluing two experience. Sever- a, a, a head that was severed? Oh, yeah, the broken elf head. Yes. Oh, and I had to have help with that one because both fingers, like both... Had a half head? Yeah. Like the index finger and thumb on each hand were glued to each half of the little elf head. And my husband made me let him take a picture before he would help me get undone. Of course. So, and I, I should Cause... post pictures of that on... You this. should you should actually start a page. Okay. Shit, Katie's glued herself like a to. list. Oh, with pictures. With pictures. I, should I, I add it to so. our blog? I could. I could totally. I think you should. I should I add it. That's important because I, you have glued yourself to the stove. Yeah, I don't have pictures of that, which is a bummer. Actually, you do. Do I? Yes, because you glued your finger. To... I do because I post. I had took a picture of it. I was on uh-huh. Instagram. Yeah. I have pictures of that. Thank God there are no pictures of me glued to my car that I know of. Or your nighty. Or or my nighty. But yeah, so you want that. And also now, if you happen to, if you don't have acetone fingernail polish remover, soaking your hands in um, vinegary, use white vinegar in oh, really? warm, in warm soapy water and just kind of, it's a little bit of dish soap vinegar and water and just rock your fingers back and forth and it loosens the glue i have to admit most of the time i just rip my fingers apart because and then you should also have that first aid kit band-aids because bleeding it does it will i have ripped my skin off before so that is a concern but i'm trying to think of other things now (laughs) off the glue topic but first aid kit oh, wise though do you can you think of anything else well something that it's not necessarily in the first aid kit but um oops sorry something else that's not in the first aid kit would be like duct tape or packing tape because sometimes that can help get out fine slivers like metal slivers or wood slivers oh, so i've used that idea. before if you're you know that's a really good idea and actually i have a metal sliver story for you that is horrifying and this will kind of maybe segue into protective equipment that we need but sharon's covering her mouth right now i wish you could see her she's going like oh god this is about my brother though oh my gosh i feel like it might give me the butt chettas it's gonna give you the butt chettas for sure because i don't even know what the fuck butt chettas were and it gave them to me i had to take him to the emergency room this is about god it was it was probably about 10 years ago. We were down visiting my family at the coast and my brother, which is his eye was killing him. Like he was, I've never seen my brother like that in pain like that. Cause he's a pretty like tough dude, you know, he's a redneck mechanic farmer dude. So he, but his eye was just like, I, he was writhing in pain literally. So I drove him to the emergency room and we got in there and he had a metal sliver in his eye. <gasps> So this is a lesson oh. about wearing fucking eye protection, people, because even when you like I work with metal, too, even when you you, you you wouldn't think that something like that could get in your eye, you can get even those little wire brushes. If you're using a wire brush to do something, that's where the metal came from in my brother's eye. You're kidding. It was a 
a brush on a drill thing that like, you know, I mean, but he had that in there and I'm going to tell you the process to remove metal from your eye is horrifying when it's happening probably to you. It was very interesting when I watched it, but my brother kicked me out of the room because I was like, really? Oh my God. The doctor was letting me get too close to him, I think. (coughs) And it pissed him off, but they take a very fine, tiny drill. Oh, and they drill in your eyeball until the little sliver comes up the little corkscrew of the drill. They drill a fucking hole in your eye to get the metal out. Now they numb it up, but it's not cool. But it's your eye. It's your eye. Open and think dental drill because this is what we're talking about. Only smaller. Okay, they'd have to put me out. They just numbed him up and he laid there and I was standing next to the doctor looking at, in my brother's eye like, oh my god, this is, I kind of want to puke, but it's so awesome, but it's so awful. And my brother finally said, get the fuck out of my room. And he made me go sit in the hallway. Oh. And the doctor's like, sorry, I can't let you stay in here. He's getting crabby. So this is Telemic for you. So. Oh my god. So... Eye protection, people. Use it. Yeah. It's very important, and you don't want to, like, you only have two eyes. Right? You can't have an eye transplant. That's horrible. No. It's awful, and it was the most horrifying thing. And the thing about my brother is, he's gotten metal in his eye again since. Oh, my God. Like, dude, seriously. Fucking eye protection. protection. And don't wear, like, my husband gave me, when I was talking about getting the balsa wood dust in my eyes, he just gave me, like, you know, they kind of look like sunglasses, but they're not sunglasses. Just, like, plastic glasses. That's not good enough. You need the kind. Here, I'll show Sharon. I'll post pictures of it. This is, this is what I use. Goggles. Yeah, goggles that stick to your face and seal around so nothing can get up underneath them. Nothing can get around them. Keep your eyes safe. Yeah. Because you're an artist and you need them. Right. Along with that very important piece of safety equipment, you know, you also need, I keep a pair of leather gloves Mm -hmm. for when I'm doing something, working with uh, something sharp or something, you know, sometimes you use weird, like I I use them when I cut metal. Oh, yeah. My leather, leather gloves. And my friend Karen told me about a cut proof glove and I do not know what this is, but I... I'm going to find out what it is. Is it like a Teflon or something? I don't know. She uses it when she carves stamps. Huh. So as a matter of fact, I will research it a little bit and post a link to it. That's In our great. show notes. Because she's, that's, she said that's what she uses on one hand when she's carving stamps. So she doesn't slip and stab herself. Yeah. Which, I mean, like, that I do it all the fucking time. Right. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. Another kind of glove that you should have is just some good... Um, like latex or non-latex gloves. Mm-hmm. Like I surgical... have a box of nitro gloves in my office all the time. Yeah, because you know you're touching sor- certain glues or adhesives that are not good to get on your hands. Mm-hmm. I should really be using them when I um, use my patina paints. Yeah. Um, I'm not very good about wearing them when I use paints and stuff, but I do wear them when I'm using pretty caustic stuff. I have pretty sensitive skin and I'm prone to breaking out in rashes and eczemas. And I actually, when I was doing that, um, forcing the patina on copper with the, I make the fume chamber. Yeah. I'm using ammonia and you, you sand down that, um, that copper. So I started noticing the first time I did it, because you use salt and ammonia on copper, and then you make this little chamber to fume it up, and I started noticing that I could taste copper in my mouth. Oh. And my dad was like, uh, you should be wearing gloves when you're doing that. That's a chemical reaction. And although it's pretty benign, like, you know, you can still make yourself sick from that. And if you could taste copper in your mouth after touching it, and it was only touching it after it had been in the ammonia chamber... Uh huh. But I was like, dude, gloves, what the frick is wrong with you? Yeah. It raised you better than that. So, you know, you should, gloves are important to have yeah. around for sure. Yeah, and definitely. Also, speaking of n- ammonia, I almost said pneumonia, ammonia, uh, you should really have face masks around definitely. for when you're using stuff like that and proper ventilation. 
absolutely not it is and depending on what you're using too other than i mean not just like a dust mask like i actually have like mm -hmm. a respirator yep and you can get respir respirators i know i have latex allergy and sometimes the gaskets are latex but yeah uh our friend alicia contacted 3m through mm -hmm. their website and they make a latex free one of those gas mask guys what are they called again? respirators respirators they make a latex free respirator that you can order and they also have a list of filters for specific things yeah that you have different filters for them and um there's actually a place in downtown portland called sanderson safety supply sanderson they're on south southeast third um they're great they have all those respirators i think they even have the latex free um, Good to know. Face parts. I'm, I'm not sure, but I think they can order them. But they have all the different filters for the respirator for mm -hmm. depend depending on what you're working with and the inserts. And really, in reality, those respirators they are not that expensive. No, for, they're really they're not. Be using you know a lot of fine dust and. Well, and when you think about it, it's your safety, it's your lungs, it's your health, it's your life. Like, yeah, absolutely. It's not even if you had to drop a hundred bucks on one. Oh yeah, they're not even nearly no, that. But it's... I think they're between forty and eighty dollars. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Yeah, and that's you know that's the other thing too. Like if it's even something that's not that you need to use a respirator, but have good air ventilation. Work by an open window. Have a fan that's drawing those vapors Definitely away. Definitely a you. fan. I always have a fan in my in my studio space because of that. Because mm -hmm. you know, like we do use some of the paints and crap we use. Or the adhesives especially tend to be nasty. Yeah. You know, there you need ventilation. And it's not just, you know, I mean, like, I hear people go, oh, I don't want to be a puss, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just some fumes. But really, it's not. And over time, like, even if it doesn't make you sick in the moment, exposure to that kind of chemicals like that over time is not fucking good for you. No, not at all. You know, actually, I was working with some stuff that was a resin and when i worked with it in a big spa spacious room didn't bother me but when i was in my little studio i started noticing like whoo i was getting really lightheaded and even with the window open and mm -hmm. the fan going i stopped working with it because i realized it was just it was too toxic for me to be working with even though you know it was just if i was working in a bigger area it probably would have been fine yeah um but you know reading the labels too just be aware yeah, that definitely read your labels and you if know, it says like I think we covered this before. If the container says use ventilation, it says it for a fucking reason. Right. Yeah. For sure. And sometimes I just take crap outside. Because mm -hmm. I know, like, if I use my clear coat, like, sometimes I'll, I'll seal stuff with a clear coat or something like that. I just go outside and do it. Yeah. If I use any kind of spray paint, because sometimes I use a spray paint primer when I'm doing stuff, I take it outside. Mm -hmm. And just use it outside because generally that kind of stuff is going to get in the air and permeate and be, it's not going to leave your room. And I don't, my studio right now is super tiny. Mm -hmm. So thankfully I'm moving across the hall and making my son change rooms with me. So I'm going to have a bigger studio over the weekend. But, oh, right. you know, even so you're indoors. Like sometimes yeah. you just have to go outside and sometimes you should also be aware of my husband said, why don't you take that stuff and use it in the garage? Because it was in the winter time and the wind was blowing. And I was like, you know what? There's a pilot light in my hot water heater. I don't think I should be filling the garage with fumes. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you kind of have to be aware of that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. really. And since we're talking about chemicals, I would like to bring up the um, making sure that you obtain the MSDS for the products that you're using, which is uh materials. What is that? What does that stand for? Material, material safety, safety data sheet. Data sheet. Yeah. Because I have had an incident here. I use epoxy resin clay a lot in my artwork and I started having allergic reactions to it and I would break out all over my hands. And even though I hadn't, I wasn't aware of touching my face around my mouth and nose and eyes, I would get these little weird water blisters Mm. And I, I contacted the company and they actually, there were Aves, they were really great. They sent me the MSDS for the products that I was using because they said, she pointed out, if you're having allergic reactions to something, they can go beyond a skin reaction. Mm -hmm. And if you get into something, your doctors are going to need to know what chemicals you have been into. 
Mm-hmm. Like it's even sometimes that they're your treatment will be different for different things that you've been exposed to. Sure. Sometimes they can cause a, a, a worse reaction. So, and she actually pointed out to me that on their website, I can get the MSDS for any of their products. And most sites are like that. They mm-hmm. have to have that legally that you should be, can be able to print them out. Mm-hmm. Any website, any of any product that you're using, mm-hmm. you should be able to find that for sure. And, just, and I know Blick has it on, it makes it very easy to find them on their website for their store brand products. Mm-hmm. So, but That's they have great. to be pretty easy to find because yeah, the like like you said, it's it's the law. It, it's OSHA, yeah, and OSHA will crack down on them. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing too is make a little notebook of the MSDS sheets that you mm-hmm. have, or a little file of it, so you know you have it readily available. And and if you share a studio space with somebody else, and maybe they aren't using those products, but if they have a reaction, you know, being aware making sure that you have that available for everybody using your studio space if you're sharing a studio. Yeah. And like, I think you were saying before we started, it could be a liability. Like if you're, if it's, if it's your studio Mm -hmm. and you're renting space to people, it could really be, or I would imagine even just in a, I'm, I don't rent a studio, but I'm sure that there's probably somewhere in leases for that kind of stuff. Most places probably have some kind of a, Hey, if you're using, crazy shit in here Mm -hmm. you have to let everybody know or something like that i would imagine yeah i don't know liability speaking but yeah you should always have the the msds and i think most places too like i know if you go to the hardware store i think they have that stuff available they can probably oh yeah give it to you for paint Uh uh-huh or whatever you're using so it's really yeah you can print it all off of the internet and for Mm -hmm. sure i think even the osha what? I was just going to say, making a folder out of them is a good idea. I think I'll, I think I'll do that. I usually keep them in my file cabinet, but like if my husband came home and saw me passed out or something, he wouldn't think to go look in my, in my file cabinet for information about the, what I had been using. Right. Yeah. I just have a notebook that says MSDS safety mm-hmm. manual and OSHA should also have that on their, their website too. And that, and that's just, I think that's Oregon's safety handling. Let's mm-hmm. see. Uh, but, you know, everybody Something has... Something compliance, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but everybody has a safety... Yeah. Uh, you know, person so, in there. Someone in charge of industrial state. safety and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Agencies. Yeah. yeah. That'll be... That is something that you should always have. And most of the stuff that I have in my studio, I think... I mean, I do have first aid stuff, but most of the things that I have are designed to protect me. Mm-hmm. Or protect... You know, like, you know, always have an apron. Yeah. Wear an apron. Sometimes I have a thicker apron with like a little bit of a coating on it for if I'm using something nasty or caustic. Not that I, I mean, I'm not making a witch's brew of chemicals in my studio, but some stuff is pretty caustic and you don't want it on your skin and you don't want to ruin your clothes too either. Right. You know, but, but you know, having that and also protecting the surfaces that you're working on. From, like, I solder a lot. I, you know, you use heat guns or glue guns or Mm -hmm. numerous things that could ruin the surfaces of your desk. They could catch shit on fire, as we've already covered, you know. Uh Yeah. I have a cool little, uh, I have a tile that my son made in ceramics class in high school Mm -hmm. that I set out. I always put, it's, it's, you know, it's probably about, I don't know. It's a big square, but I use that to set my soldering iron on or my hot glue gun on or my my heat gun on. Anything hot hot like that, I set on that tile. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. While yeah, I'm using covering it. Covering your surfaces, protecting your surfaces. Yeah. That's funny. We went, when Kurt and I, my husband and I got married, we had a theme wedding. And all of the bridesmaids and my mom and mother-in-law and myself wore fairy wings that we made. Mm-hmm. But we were down to the wire on making fairy wings. So the night before the wedding, I went and stayed at my friend's house, who was my maid of honor. And my husband stayed at home with his best man, my dad, I think a couple other people, and they finished making the fairy wings. <gasps> so there was a lot of beer involved in that process. I'm just going to say. So we go to our wedding. We have our wedding the next day. We come home. 
my husband and I were horribly hung over the next day. And then we got ready to go on our honeymoon and we left for our honeymoon. And before we left for our honeymoon, two days after our wedding, our, my friend brought in all of our gifts and we opened all of our gifts from the wedding and we stacked them in boxes on the table and stacked them under the table and just had this, it was, it looked like somebody lit a bomb in my house and we left it that way when we went on our honeymoon because we didn't have time to really like organize and clean up from the chaos. We get home. So we were in Ireland for eight days. We get home. So this is 10 days after our wedding. The fucking soldering iron was still on. Oh my God. On our dining room table in the middle of wrapping paper and <gasps> boxes. Wow. I cannot believe that we did not come home to no home. Wow. You're so lucky. Like the only saving grace is that he had stuck the, stuck it handle in first into the tube of solder, like the, the spool of solder. Oh, wow. So it wow. was sticking up. But like we have a cat that was crawling around on stuff, knocking crap over while we were gone, you know, so. Oh, my God. But, you know, it just goes to show you get distracted. Yeah. You get busy with stuff. You forget to turn shit off or unplug it sometimes. Yeah. So you need to have like a, you know, a, a heat proof surface to do any kind of heat related anything on. Absolutely. Wow. Or something. But yeah, that's crazy. Talking about that, like, have you ever had any, uh, what's your worst studio accident you've ever had? Injury, injury wise, or even just, oh shit, I just fucked all kinds of crap up wise. I don't think I've had anything that's really bad. Oh, I do actually have a story though. It wasn't to me, but <laughs> so <laughs> I think the worst I've done is like leave my glue gun on and come back a few days later. But I, I think the worst one that I'd actually heard about, and this goes to like wearing the appropriate attire was um, in our ceramic studio. And this woman <laughs> Was sitting down at the wheel, you know, it's a, it's a electric wheel and she had a big, long, flowy skirt on. Oh God. <laughs> and she starts to, you know, starts the wheel up and that, it was like one of those elastic waisted, like hippie long flowy skirts just oh, no. ripped right off. <laughs> 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 and wrapped around. Oh no! Shaft of the wheel. So you know, wear appropriate attire. Yeah. Wear appropriate shoes. Don't wear a skirt. No, don't. Seriously, okay. that's kind of hilarious. That's so funny, though. That is yeah. so funny. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think I personally have had anything that was trying to think of the worst thing that I've ever like I I don't know I'm kind of a just an accident waiting to happen anyway I don't know why I try not to be like but it seems like the more I try to be safe and the more I try not to do stuff that is dumb I do stuff that is dumb so like I I don't know I've definitely though shoes are important because I have narrowly missed dropping exacto blades and stuff like that on my feet. Like they've yeah. stuck in the floor, like right by my toe. Right. You know, yeah. So wear your shoes when you're doing stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. For crying out loud. I think that the catching, catching the, the stuff inside the smoke bomb on my desk on fire was pretty. Yeah, that was probably <laughs> that that pretty bad. Pretty dumb. I've caught other stuff on fire though, just from like placing my soldering iron and it's like rolled or something that was before i had my little tile that i use now uh-huh so i'm just i cut myself a lot though yeah. i do injure myself all the time i cut myself i glue myself to shit i get crap I, in my eyes like i burn myself pretty bad with my soldering oh, iron burns i thankfully and i'm surprised i have not burned myself with my soldering iron yet but i have gotten some pretty gnarly hot glue burns yeah so, and I also have, um, somebody, you, when you, I use like a resin clay that you bake sometimes, like Sculpey. Uh huh. What's the other one? I can't remember. Or even I use shrinky dinks. Uh huh. 
Dude, that all that shit's hot. Don't yeah. fucking touch it when you take it out of the oven. Right. Like, yeah. I've burned the crap out of myself doing stuff like that. So, you know, and again, keep stuff on hand. Totally. And also, you know, luckily my studio is right next to my bathroom. Uh huh. So I can go in there. But you should have, even if you're, if you're working outside or you're in a studio that you're renting, like, make sure that you have access to water. Yeah, totally. Like immediately, especially for things like burns or if you've spilled chemicals on yourself or mm-hmm. you've gotten something in your eye, like you want to be able to rinse off really quickly. I actually have had a couple of friends that used to share a studio space and their biggest complaint about it was that they didn't have water, access to water. And it's oh. like they had to go down the hall to a little shared bathroom because it was kind of like a creative space. A, a space where they, I think it's owned by something called Creative Space. I don't know. Yeah. But they, um, they had to go way down the hall mm-hmm. to a little tiny bathroom that was shared. And it's kind of a pain in the ass when you're trying to get water to mix your paint, but it's a bigger pain in the ass and possibly dangerous when you're trying to like rinse your, rinse something that you've, or run water on a burn or rinse chemicals off your clothes. Or, right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, I think we, I think we got it all. Yeah. Maybe anything else you can add to this? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I guess I do want to make a quick announcement. At the end of July or beginning of August, Sharon and I are going to do an episode on artist trading cards. And we thought it would be kind of fun since we're always using our own examples. Uh, we thought it would be kind of neat to put out a call to our listeners to submit photos of their artist trading cards for us to talk about and use in the episode. So if you would like for your artist trading cards to be for us to talk about them and post them on our blog for all of the other listeners to see, you can send those pictures to us or any other email for any reason uh, to artigals at gmail.com. And I think we're probably going to give it a couple more weeks before we close this. So I'll remind you next week. But again, if you want us to see your cool artist trading cards, I just thought it'd be, cause I've seen so many cool ones. I just thought it would be kind of neat to get a variety of different things. Cause I have a couple of friends that I'm going to specifically ask because they do some neat stuff with those. Cool. So, I'm excited. And again, speaking of our blog, you can always go to our blog and find our show notes and, photographs um and apparently i'm now adding a page that is a list of shit i've glued myself to with pictures to our blog so you can go there and check that out that's to artsygals.wordpress.com and you can follow us on twitter and you can also subscribe to our podcast um through stitcher and through itunes so do that and give us some awesome feedback because we love that and let us know you're listening until next week bye